From NewTasteToday.com, I'm Tony Bruski. This is the New Taste Today podcast. On today's show, we are going to explore something a lot of us oftentimes don't think about very much. Prison food. What is it like in the big house to sit down for a meal? We're going to talk to a reporter who did a little bit of investigating into a certain prison food item that actually had a lawsuit filed over it. He served it to his family. We'll get his reaction. Then we'll talk to a prison guard whose name will remain anonymous about his views on prison food and if he's ever partaken in any of the grub. And we're also going to get the perspective in our third act from an inmate on what eating in the big house is like. It's all about prison food on today's podcast from NewTasteToday.com. I hope you'll join us. When you think about prison food, what comes to mind? Is it an item described as gruel, as seen in countless movies and TV shows? Well, we all know that movies and TV shows are not exactly direct reflections of reality, but could they be when it comes to the prison cafeteria? Recently, a man in Milwaukee County Jail filed a lawsuit against the manufacturer of a popular menu item called Nutriloaf, claiming that the Nutriloaf made him violently ill. This caught the interest of a reporter from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, Jim Stingle, who decided to find out just how bad the Nutriloaf actually is. Jim, welcome. Hi, Tony. Jim, take us back to you finding out about this lawsuit filed by the prisoner. And let's start there. What actually happened when he filed this lawsuit? Well, you know, he sued and claimed that this uh, neutral loaf had made him quite ill, that he said that uh, he he claimed that it was rancid. You know, normally they just claim that it's unappetizing, you uh-huh. know, that it doesn't taste good. In his case, he was claiming that it was rancid, that it made him violently ill, that he lost 14 pounds over 19 days. Um, this is a guy, by the way, who's serving a 100-year sentence. So I don't know how sympathetic we need to be to him. The system blinked, if you will, because the insurance company for the food provider for the jail mm-hmm. ended up settling with him. And uh, our, our story last week said that it was a five-figure settlement. <laughs> so uh, I don't know how he's going to spend that money exactly. But uh, More neutral love for everyone! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this stuff, uh, I, I think you had used the word popular earlier to describe it. It's, it's popular with the jails that, that like to serve it, but apparently the inmates really hate it. It's so something that they often serve with it, to the trouble some inmates. It's often served without any kind of silverware or anything. People eat it with their hands. It's, yeah, the whole thing is kind of disgusting. And you wanted to find out what it actually tastes like. So what, what did you embark on? Yeah, so I decided to make some myself. So we had published with the with the original news story an ingredient list. It didn't exactly say how to how to mix it and how to cook it. But mm-hmm. I, then I went online and I just Googled, you know, like a neutral loaf recipes, and I was able to piece them together well enough. There's a lot of different recipes out there, but I think what it normally amounts to is is something like a bisquick, uh, and, and and in my case, I also use some like these flaked potatoes. That sort of whole kind, you know, that's the sort of the cohesion that holds it all together. Sure. And then you throw sort of everything at it. You know, in my case, I, I threw in um, some, you know, some carrots that I that I had uh, ground up, uh, some celery, tomato sauce. Some, uh, some, some, uh, like a non dairy creamer just to make it a little more moist so it held together better. Mm-hmm. Uh, beans, ch- uh, it called for chili powder, which I couldn't find around the house, so I put in cayenne pepper. And I'll have to say that, uh, spiciness was one, of, was one of the main characteristics, at least of the, of the, uh, neutral of I made. It was really spicy. I forgot to mention chicken or beef. Oftentimes oh. you, you can make it vegetarian too if you want, but, okay. uh, I did put uh, a few ounces of ground turkey in there. Honestly, this doesn't sound all that bad. What was the result once you popped this thing in the oven? You know, it, 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 of course, I used all fresh ingredients. Sure. I was not, you know, cleaning stuff out of the fridge that had been there for two weeks. You put it all together, this is all very edible stuff. I, when it was, when it was uh, I baked it for almost an hour in these little meatloaf pans, it it uh, it smelled okay. It smelled a little bit like biscuits, you know. Sure. And, uh, it, the, the trouble is that you know, a you know you know it's prison food and that people have sued over it, so you get kind of a sort of old nauseous sense in just knowing that. And, and b it, it it doesn't look very good for some reason. This stuff has a has a sort of unpleasant uh, appearance. I don't know why that is. It's sort of orangey. Uh, maybe that's from the combination of the tomato sauce and the biscuit. Sure. Uh, so it's sort of orangey with these little bits of green and whatever orange and and you know the beans sticking out of it and stuff. 
so I found it to be unappealing just appearance-wise. But I think if you were to close your eyes and someone were to put a little piece in your mouth, I think you would think, oh, okay, it's food, it's edible, it's not that bad. Mm-hmm. Not worthy you know. of filing a lawsuit over? Well, again, you know, I, you know, you know, I, you know, I made it, I made it my way because I knew I'd be eating it. I actually sure. tried to get my family to eat it. My wife wouldn't touch it. My daughter and I had a little, and then I brought some to work, and uh, just sent out a message to the newsroom. And you know, you know how it worked. People will eat anything, you know. And uh, people started coming over to my desk, and this was, you know, middle of the afternoon, so people were hungry, and people started eating it. Uh, one or two wanted to microwave it, and the rest just uh, ate it cold and uh, with their fingers. Mm-hmm. You know? so, what was the consensus around the office? You know, a couple of a couple of the uh, again, uh, my, my coworkers thought that it was pretty good. Uh, <laughs> now these these are guys who do happen to be two guys who do a lot of hunting. You know, sure. so maybe they're used to hunter stew and whatever, just sort of stuff being thrown together. Uh, but I, I, you know, nobody thought that the taste was terrible. I would think, but there were a lot of people who turned up their nose just at the appearance of it, and just. And maybe also just at the name of it, you know, Nutra Loaf. Yeah. Maybe it's the word loaf there or something. And Nutra sounds like it's trying to, like they're trying to claim it's good for you, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, I did, after the, my column ran about this, I did hear from somebody who used to work at the jail, and she said, you know, it sounds like you, you made it pretty well, but what she says, we used to really throw everything in there, you know, whatever <laughs> we had around. And, you know, so you kind of, and I don't know, I mean, how they would deal with, like, you know, like allergies and things like that. Sure. I mean, how would you even know? I mean, there's so much stuff that they toss into this stuff. And it's just like, you know, it's just like the devil's meatloaf, as I called it in the columns. So. You made like the Bobby Flay version of Nutri-Loaf. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did. I did. It was, yeah, that's right. It, it, was, it was more upscale. After the lawsuit, is the jail still serving Nutri-Loaf? Yes, they said that they were going to continue to serve it, and uh, you know maybe they'll be a little more careful, uh, you know, not not putting out rancid neutral loaf. But uh, <laughs> I think that I, you know, apparently it serves them well, and and I think that, uh, and I'm not exactly sure. I didn't get to the bottom of whether or not you know the more well-behaved prisoners get far better food, or whether neutral loaf might be mm-hmm. on anybody's plate in jail. I, I just again, I just think it's one of those foods that make you rethink, you know, whether you should be committing crime and in jail in the first place, probably. <laughs> Jim, thank you for talking with us. You bet. Good talking okay. to you. Jim Stengel is a reporter for the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. You can read his column online at jsonline.com. I don't know about your workplace, but when there's food somewhere, everyone tends to hover over it and consume it almost no matter what it is. Is that the same in a prison setting? Are the guards also eating the prison food just because it's there? We decided to do a little bit of investigating and actually talk to a prison guard whose name and location will remain anonymous to find out the answer to that question and get some insight into what else is served in our prison system in the United States. Mystery prison guard man, let's start off by, in your own words, describing to us what prison food is like. Unique. Unique. Now, I need you to expand on that a little bit for us. (laughs) Um, And by unique, I mean pretty much uh, disturbing. Confidential would be a different and interesting (laughs) word. Do the the guards or employees ever partake in the same food that the prisoners are eating? I will be the first to admit that I have partook in the uh, correctional environment food. Now, was this by choice or out of morbid curiosity? Uh, a delicate blend of both, to be honest with you. Um, sometimes necessity. Okay. Um, if uh, if I didn't happen to bring lunch or breakfast or uh, or supper that evening, I would. I would uh, partake in a tray if it was uh, if it was available to me. Now let's talk about specifics on the food itself. Let's let's first talk about about the good things, if there is anything that that falls into that category. Is there anything that falls into the category of hey, the prisoners really look forward to this specific item when it's offered? Oh boy, I would have to say uh, the chicken patty whenever it comes. And now there's two different kinds. There's a chicken patty and a spicy chicken patty. It's almost like uh, they get their own choice like they would at a restaurant. Does it resemble chicken? It's chicken-esque. Chicken-esque? Yeah, chicken-ish. Is that, is that, is that okay. better? Is that well, I remember as a child eating things that were labeled chicken patty and chicken nuggets, and they, they kind of resembled something more like a chicken sponge. And I thoroughly enjoyed them. Is that kind of what these are like, or is this even a I, I step below exactly, that? I wouldn't exactly call it a chicken sponge, because that might insult sponges elsewhere. Um, it, it's, let's just say, out of all the chicken patties I've eaten there, and there have been... 
let's just say a few, and by a few, I mean probably close to six or seven. Um, let's just say that maybe twice it has resembled an actual poultry item. Is that in terms of looks or taste? Yes. <laughs> yes. That means yes to both? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are they breaded? Are they like grilled or what they what? they are breaded okay so it, it kind of is one of those mystery deep fried items yes what other items are offered in the prison system that that prisoners look at as i don't know edible uh the sliced bread okay that's i mean that's got to be kind of hard to screw up doesn't it yes yes it, it is it is believe it or not the, the sliced bread is usually something everybody looks forward to now how about the items that that are are not very popular um that's Pretty much just about everything else that they serve. Bologna, believe it or not, is a staple of almost every meal. Okay. There's usually uh, odd mixtures of, uh, like, one day they serve taco meat with a side of pineapple, and the vegetable they served with it was uh, carrot sticks. That doesn't sound like it would be that bad. I mean, it sounds like something that probably could be put together for a very low cost and probably, you know, would resemble what, what you would think, you know, a a cheap taco would would look like is that something yeah. that they enjoy or is that one of those where they really it's 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 so destroyed that it's it's not an edible item oh it's so bastardized it it just it looks completely you know they get it and most of them will groan most of them will complain how is it uh, i mean like what does the jail taco look like that it's it's so un, it, it, unappealing imagine if you will You know those separated plates that you get at those wonderful Thanksgiving dinners when you go to, like, your grandparents' house? Sure. And instead of having one plate where everything just melts together, you have your segregated items, you know, on a plate. Well, imagine the biggest section on the tray being filled with something that looks like what what could be compared to... How do I say this? Um... Something that might, you know, come out of you after a bad hospital stay. Oh. With a kind of salsa that looks vaguely like, oh, blood. So that's the taco meat and the salsa? Yes, yeah. Oh, I think you're supposed to put that into, do they have a tortilla shell? Um, Sometimes they come with a tortilla shell that's been cut in half and served with, uh, to say that this cheese is dried and aged would be a compliment. The, the cheese that they serve it with, it looks like, well, I don't know. I, I would compare it to styrofoam. It's probably not cheese then. Yeah, well, it's it's the cheapest version of cheese. I've actually <laughs> I've actually had it. I've actually tried it. It does have a little bit of a, of a cheese feel to it, but it's like the cheapest cheese you can find. Are any of these items, have you ever come across them in the, like a grocery store or being available to the general public? Or is this like its own ecosystem of food that only lives within the, within the prison systems? It's kind of like, well, I would have to say that you could probably find any of this stuff in a store. Mm-hmm. You could find, you know, the, the cheapest cheese in that there is. You could find that in a store. But even the, even the cheapest cheese in a store, it sounds like what, what's in the jails are, are much worse than even the cheapest cheese in the store. Well, it's all one thing you have to keep in mind is when you're feeding a massive amount of people, mm-hmm. and you know, whereas where I work, we, we feed you know close to 1500 people a day, mm-hmm. uh, and that's you know all three meals, it's all about your cost, sure. So it's you know, whatever is cost effective, the least amount of money, the most you can get. Is there ever a day like the holidays have special food or anything like that? Yes, yes, occasionally. Uh, they have, uh, for lunch on Thanksgiving, they have served uh, turkey and stuffing uh, and dread- and with, uh, with gravy and, a, and a, like a roll and mashed potatoes and, and corn. And it's actually comparable to what you would get, say, in a high school cafeteria. Really? So that must be a big day then. It is. It is. And the, then you also put the fact that the good food, it's a jail-type environment, Sometimes people will fight over these. these I was just going to ask; those must be very popular fight days. Oh yes, they're very possible. They're, the, the holidays are, are like that as it is, but add the you know the fact that there's good food involved, and then there's always a chance for that. Do they ever get dessert? Yes, every meal. Really? What is the every average? Meal what, what's the average dessert? It just depends. We had we a few years ago, we switched our provider of, of our uh, who runs our kitchen. Mm-hmm. 
and the food has actually gotten better. Mm-hmm. Now they get uh, like cookies. You know, when I say cookies, I mean like uh, sandwich cookies. Okay. Not, not Oreos per se, but uh, like vanilla type wafer cookies. Okay. Um, and then they get pudding, which I've seen some interesting pudding. There's some puddings that let's just say I, I didn't know if they were part of the meat item or if they were a dessert item. Mm-hmm. There are times when they were supposed to serve jello, and um, let's just say they didn't give it time to sit and it looked like it was syrup. <laughs> so that they, happened. Are they allowed to trade food at all, like in a high school cafeteria? It is, is technically, it is against the rules to do so. Okay. But it, it happens. It's, it's done. very widespread. Oh, yes. Okay. People, and that, that's, that's generally the cause for most of your fights, mm-hmm. is people will gamble their food trays. Well, thank you yeah. for enlightening us from a guard's perspective on what the food is like in, in the prison yeah, system. And we didn't even touch on breakfast food. We don't want to make everyone sick. Yeah. Oh, the, let, let me just say, in most places, one can distinguish between grits and oatmeal and biscuits and gravy. Not in prison. No. Thank you for talking with us, Mystery Man. Anytime, sir. So now we have perspective on what prison food is like from a reporter who was reporting on a lawsuit filed by a prisoner for some unappetizing Nutriloaf and from a prison guard. But what do the inmates themselves think about food while incarcerated? As you know, it's probably not super easy just to write or call an inmate and get an interview. So we found a letter that was written by an inmate in California, and we're going to do a dramatic reading of that letter that thoroughly describes the experience of prison food and the atmosphere surrounding it. So here it goes. This is a dramatic reading. It's a letter written by Tito David Valdez Jr. while doing time in California. And again, we found this online. Ah, I remember the days when I could eat whatever I wanted. Denny's Grand Slam for breakfast, a cold Subway pastrami sandwich for lunch, a juicy Carl's hamburger with crispy fries for dinner, delicious homemade Italian pizza for Monday night football, mom's beef stew for that special occasion. You probably take the freedom to choose what you want to eat for granted. With a touch of a phone button, you can order Domino's Pizza home delivered. A stroke of a keyboard, you can order groceries home delivered. You can page a male or female escort to come to your home and prepare a meal. Hey, that is a million dollar idea. As a prisoner, my meals are free. The California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation gets a daily budget of $2.25 to feed me three meals. What kind of quality do you think you can buy? From watching too many Hollywood prison movies, I always thought convicts were fed just bread and water. When I first stepped foot into prison and read the chow hall menu, I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. Monday night dinner, chicken fried steak. Tuesday night chicken Alfredo, Wednesday night chicken quarters. When the guard announced over the loudspeaker, gentlemen, it's chow time, I found myself salivating over the prospect of a tasty meal. But boy, was I in for a surprise. In 1995, I was housed in the maximum security level four New Folsom prison in California. The majority of convicts there were serving life or life without parole sentences. As a result of the facility housing the dangerous convicts, The structure of the building was designed with security in mind. One guard stood behind an enclosed glass cubicle punching buttons on a control board. Another guard in the cubicle constantly pointed a rifle out a porthole toward any inmate who were let out. During chow release, only eight cells were open at a time, so just 16 inmates could exit and walk into the day room area. As the cell door racked open, My cellmate and I exited, and I walked into the day room area to hang out until the door which led to the chow hall opened. That night, the meal was chicken fried steak. Hey, Joker, why is that guard pointing a rifle at us? I asked with naive curiosity of a first-timer inmate. Hey, Holmes, that's his job. Sometimes shit jumps off in the chow hall, so they're ready to fire a bullet to break up any incident. You serious? You ever seen them actually use the rifle? Yeah, Holmes. About two weeks ago, a white boy skanked another white boy in the neck for a drug debt. He went stop, so the guard fired a bullet into his leg. I felt frightened, 
yet I didn't show it. Joker was a 25-year-old. He sported his best prison blues, pressed with state boots, and had a tough, glossy mirror to shine them. And he showed an expression of pride in oneself. Hey, Holmes, when the door opens, he warned, wait for the others. Let them go first. We waited for the other two to come toward us. I learned that when you walk to chow, you stick with your own race. The reason is because when you sit down after you get your tray, it is controlled movement, and you want to sit at the next available open table where a seat is open. As the chow hall door opened, we walked in a single file line. The chow hall was one cavernous rectangular structure with about 16 stainless steel tables which seat four people. On, on both sides of the chow hall, there was a guard inside a glass cubicle pointing a rifle at us. Behind a cafeteria-style glass barrier, a row of four convict kitchen workers moved each tray along, asking if we wanted a certain item on the menu that day. Joker spoke to his homie kitchen worker. Hey, Holmes, hook me up, eh? With some extra rice. Forget the chicken. The worker, nicknamed Termite, took a fork and held up a chicken patty, saying, Hey, homie, come on. You know you want it. And he laughed as if he'd just heard a good joke. You ain't right, dog, Joker answered. Come on, homie, give me some doubles on that rice. As we moved down the line, we picked up our trays and used a water dispenser to pour cold water into our state-issued plastic mugs, then followed the inmates in front of us toward a table to sit down. Joker and I sat down at the next available table. Our table had an empty seat and was soon filled by an elderly inmate. Hungry, my mouth watering, I grabbed a plastic state-issued fork and cut one piece of the chicken patty, tasting it. I couldn't help but spit it out in my napkin. That is nasty. What is it? I asked in a disgusted tone of voice, feeling nauseous. Joker was laughing. It's mystery meat. My homie says that comes in a box that says for institutional use only. He says that stray cats that come around don't even eat it. That's why I always ask for extra rice. Damn, why don't you tell me? You ain't right. Everyone is different, homie. What's one man's trash is another man's treasure. He was right. Seconds later, the elderly convict, who had to be in his early 70s, asked, Can I have it? I'll eat it. I shoved my tray closer to his tray, and he scooped up the patty with his fork. He sprinkled salt and pepper on it and ate it as if it was a juicy, tender sirloin from a gourmet restaurant. He even turned to the table next to us and obtained other inmates' patties. There wasn't much to the dinner. Mashed potatoes and gravy, a thin slice of cornbread, and jello for dessert. I was still hungry. We were rushed and ordered by the guards to finish this gourmet treat within seven minutes. You're not allowed to get up and leave on your own. A guard stands by each table and all four men must get up, dump their trays, and only eight inmates are allowed out of the chow hall at the same time. When it was our turn, as we walked back to the day room, Joker nudged me. Hey, Holmes, check this out. You don't ever share your food. That old man should have known better than to ask you. You could be checked for doing that. What do you mean checked, I asked. There's a code behind these walls, prison politics. We always follow it and you always stick to your kind. You don't drink, eat, smoke, don't share anything with them. You could be beat up or stabbed for doing such a thing. Tuesday night meal, chicken Alfredo. I expected something like a dish from Olive Garden. Turned out to be watered down noodles with chopped up mystery meat. Wednesday night meal, chicken a la king. Looked exactly like the night before. Thursday night meal, chicken adobo. Friday night, kung pu chicken. Saturday night, chicken wings. Sunday night, chicken quarters. Once I read that eating too much chicken causes impotence. A decade later in 2006, we were only getting chicken meals about three times a week. I worked my way down to Soledad Prison, a level two minimum security facility due to be disciplinary free. No more guards with rifles pointed at me during chow. Less prison politics. I can eat at any table I choose. I can take my time and eat without being told when I have to get up and leave. Convicts no longer serve chow in front of you. They're all behind a steel barricade and shove out trays of food on a conveyor line. You pick it up out of the hole at the end of the line. There's a new mystery meat with different names. Monday night, Corsican sausage. Tuesday night, Salisbury patty. Wednesday night, roast turkey. Thursday night, roast beef. Since I can't ask a homie any more for extra rice or extra something else, I've been stuck eating the mystery meat. I found that mixing it with rice or potatoes, sprinkling a little pepper and salt on it, and pouring a little hot sauce on it adds some flavor. After a decade of prison conditioning, I found myself walking to chow when I'm not even hungry. Like in the movie Rain Man, starring Dustin Hoffman as an autistic man, when it's a certain time, I eat at that time because I'm institutionalized. I've also noticed that other inmates are institutionalized in their own ways. Alfredo, why are you taking that meat with you in that plastic baggie? I'm going to go mix it with the top ramen soup, he replied with a pride a master chef takes in his work. I turned to another inmate. Ricardo, why do you buy all that extra state-issued meat from the kitchen worker after he gets off his shift? I'm going to make burritos with it, homie. As I went to dump my tray contents into the trash, a white inmate, a veteran lifer, scoops up my meat and the meat off other trays. 
Hey, Bruce, why do you eat that garbage off people's trays? After 25 years in the cage, it all tastes the same. I never go to sleep hungry. I'll put some of this meat between slices of bread for today's lunch. I'll tell you a story. When I was free, I was homeless. The best food you could find was in a Taco Bell trash bin around midnight. Over the years, due to budget constraints, the quality of food provided by the CDC already inmates has gotten worse. We used to get three hot meals a day. Today, we get two hot meals and a sack lunch. The lunch contains a mystery meat, which stinks. Not even the cats and seagulls will eat it. And they normally eat anything. To appease prisoners, they allow us to purchase food items at the prison canteen once a month and provide forms to order food items from outside approved vendors in 30-pound boxes every three months. We can even buy hot pots to use to cook. From a crafty inmate, you can even obtain a hot plate to fry food in. Ordering food from vendors or at the prison canteen has become big business. If a prisoner has money, he certainly has a choice in what to eat every night. If a prisoner is poor, he has nothing coming. He must eat chow hall food. Into my 13th year of imprisonment, I've noticed a major change in my life. My circle of friends and free society has dwindled. I'm usually broke, struggling to accumulate canteen items so I don't have to go to chow. I earn only $15 a month from my prison job as a landscaper. I spend it all, every penny. One thing is always certain in the lives of prisoners. When the bell rings for chow, a hot meal will always await us. And it doesn't matter what the menu says. Whatever mystery meat it is, it all tastes the same. It's processed in a prison somewhere in the state, made especially for our salivating taste buds. That account was written by Tito David Valdez Jr. while serving time in California. So there you go, a full spectrum perspective on what prison food is actually like from a reporter, a guard, and someone serving time. And from a foodie perspective, that is the last place I ever want to be. That would be the most difficult part, not eating good food. Our thanks to Jim Stiegel from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel and JS Online for letting us talk to him about his reporting on the ever delicious Nutriloaf. I am actually kind of curious to go and bake myself a batch and see if it's all that bad. And also to the guard, whose name we will not mention, for giving us a perspective on what exactly he sees the prison food as. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast in iTunes. Just search for A New Taste Today. And also be sure to join us on our website for more videos, food stories, and podcasts at newtastetoday.com. I'm Tony Bruschi. Thanks for listening.